Hey, so um, I'm here with the van right now, my Chevy Express, and I've gotten a couple of questions like, hey, where's the van? What's the status on it? What does it look like now? Is it for sale? Um, so I'm just going to do a quick video here, just kind of show you guys what it looks like in the inside now. It's still being built, and it's still what I think is quite a ways away from what I envision in my head as the final product. But as you know, I also have a lot of projects going on at the same time, so it's not always like first priority uh, to get this knocked out. But I'm gonna do a little walkthrough and kind of show you. And as far as selling it, I would prefer not to sell it until I've kind of seen what I have in my head kind of come to life, if that makes any sense. And so I'm trying to hold on to it, but <laughs> if anybody knows me, there's not a single thing that I have, whether it's something I bought yesterday or the day before, that is that cannot be sold. I am not that attached to these uh, vehicles or material things. I like the idea of buying things. I'm a hobbyist, and I like turning that into something great. So I never build them with the idea of flipping them or selling them. It's more like, how awesome can I make this vehicle? So if somebody's interested in it and they want to buy it, I am totally more than happy to sell it and you can send me offers if uh, that's what you want to do. But um, I am still far away from what I envision being the, the completed product on this. So we're going to do a walkthrough and then we're actually going to chat with Joel and he's actually going to talk about the woodworking inside. And um, <laughs> you guys got to watch the rest of my videos, right? I'm also doing some work in the barn in there and you can see some of Joel's work in there as well. Uh, super excellent stuff. And you can also reach out to me. Maybe you just have some woodworking you want done or whatever else not. We're more than happy to, to do that for you as we have time or as we have availability and depending on the size of your project, right? So, cause I'm getting some questions on that too. Like, hey, can you build this? Can you do this? Definitely. And what what's the price, right? That's a big question all the time. And it's honestly very hard to say. Um, Joel and I do not do things for flipping reasons, you know? So everything is very high quality. It's built to last. So it's never things that I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to be a super cheap build. There's nothing like that. We don't really do that because we want high quality things. So um, that being also said, I think there's uh, it's custom, right? So you can choose, hey, for X amount of dollars, what could you do for me? You know, and we'd be like, okay, yeah, that's a thousand dollars. You can have a butcher block tabletop and that's it <laughs> you know but i'm kidding but anyways not really though right it's all just kind of based on that kind of stuff and kind of hard to put prices out there right because you're not going to get the right messaging out there to people so what i like to tell people is custom and if you come to us and you got x budget we can tell you exactly what that budget can get uh what you can get for that budget but without any more of this nonsense, let's just get back into the vanning and uh, we're going to walk through that and kind of show you guys what it's all about. All right. All right. So here we are now in the back of the van and we got Joel, master carpenter here. <laughs> so what we're looking at here, I put Joel in here. Joel, how tall are you? Uh, 5'10". 5'10". Yes, Let's sir. see how much room you got there. So your head kind of touches up there when you're sitting. Yes. Yeah, kind of gets right up to the top. So Joel is sitting on what is a bench or what would be a bench by day and then a bed by night. And he's kind of going to talk us through that. And we haven't finalized exactly how this bed is going to look. There's a bunch of different ideas out there. We're just trying to see what's best. So Joel, kind of just walk us through where we are at this point, because I know we haven't done a video in a while. So yeah, there's wires dangling from the ceiling. There's <laughs> wood all over the place. So what is going on? Yeah, so right now we're finishing up, um, obviously, the woodworking. Um, just getting everything cased in so you can kind of see over here. Like you said, we've got some wires hanging. Um, I have some template pieces here. So um, what we're going to do back here is actual the, the stock lights um, from up front right there. Um, they're going to go in these corners here and over here. Um, so what that's going to look like is this box here, which has been used to kind of encase the curtain airbags. So, um, that's going to be extended across here. So we have a place to put those lights. Um, we're going to finish the ceiling here, um, going all the way across. And then we've got some nice uh, four inch LED lights that are going to go in between each panel there. Um, those are going to be dimmable, controlled up front in the control box. 
Um, so those lights are actually going to be the ones that are running off of the house batteries, right? You just talked yes. about lights right now. We left yeah. the the lights in for the factory lights. Yep. So when you open the doors, yep. those are still going to be turning on. Yeah, so we'll have those, the factory doors, which are still connected to the battery. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have, like you said, the um, the house battery there, the 12-volt the, the system that the other bolt, uh, the other wiring that's going to be connected off to. So Correct. Um, the reason you see the wiring here still is just because of the... Um, up front here you can see we've got the larger gauge wires that uh, for the solar panels that are eventually going to go on the roof um so before we close this in all the way we've got to get the utility box for the wires um drilled and mounted up on the seat on, on the roof of the van first all right very nice and you got some insulation up there you want to talk about that for a yeah, second so we've just got some reflective insulation there i wanted to make sure we left a little bit of a gap there just for the heat to kind of um expand and contract um, just kind of what I found, you know, best use on the internet. So um, this will be reflective from the top. So it just kind of keeps the heat going upwards. Um, and, and Joel, I don't mean to cut mm -hmm. you off, but yeah. this is insane. And this is yeah. completely stupid. Yeah. What is this nonsense? <laughs> right? <laughs> People are going to want to know that. Like I've yeah. seen a lot of van builds and this looks insane. Like what is that? <laughs> Well, attaching wood to wood's a lot easier, you know. So again, we talked about early on in this, we were going to follow as many of the curvatures as we could. So um, this was a way for me to flex um, the wood along the ridge of the van and still follow that same curve. So as you see over here with the shiplap on the ceiling, it's following that nicely. And we'll follow that all the way over here to this box um, so we can connect it. So I know you, you didn't have to do that, right? You mm -hmm. didn't have to do that. That takes like one billion hours compared to just getting some kind of piece of wood that's you know flexible and just kind of curve it ar along the roof right sure, so sure. The <laughs> so that did not need to happen and i just want to highlight that because that's absolutely crazy how long did that take you just from design to actually implementing it and putting it up there you say it didn't need to happen but, um... <laughs> I feel like it needed to happen. I feel like it needed to be done right, you know. Very good. Um, I mean, it just gives us a little bit more headroom down the center, you know. Yeah. Um, and it looks nice. Yeah, know? it so, absolutely I mean, does. And then I can truly say it's custom. I mean, yeah. it's very custom. It's, a, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And it's just, I make fun of it. But honestly, you don't see a lot of vans built mm -hmm. like this. And I was just talking about this in the video that we don't build these to flip them. We yeah. honestly build them because we are creators. Yes. And we want to see something fantastic come out of something and this is an example right here when you've got detail like this that does not need to occur necessarily and yet <laughs> here it is uh clear and present yeah so i would say about four hours to do all of them yeah um and then the set time we used uh fusion liquid nail which is a little bit stronger than standard liquid nail to kind of hold it in place and then we also did some uh some metal screws up in there as well just so for, for extra security so about four hours and then uh 24 hours of set set up yeah. overnight so okay not too crazy so last time we spoke i think we filmed this van you were still working on the cabinetry and everything else down here so let's talk about that for a little bit you got a couple of drawers now uh yeah. right in front of you yeah so uh we'll start with this back one here this is just kind of a utility you know whatever it's going to be um you know I, I envision you know little propane tanks um maybe some you know electrical whatever just eat gas cans whatever it's going to be you know something that doesn't really necessarily need to be enclosed maybe quick access um <laughs> you know maybe it's a dish sink or wash kit or whatever it is but just kind of an open-ended storage there for that and how deep is that what are the dimensions oh, of that about that one there is roughly 18 by 18. okay yeah roughly all right. right around there you know but um still very modifiable for the future you know the last build i did i had a fire extinguisher under there you know a little toolkit things like that so Absolutely. just kind of open-ended for the user what they want to put in there okay and then flip over to the other then side we'll go over here um all custom cabinets again very necessary had to be done um, <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah um so this was storage you know we talked about um fishing skiing hunting whatever you know so these will fit a fairly large um ski size um if you remember the earlier video i actually got in there so um it's roughly i think just shy of six feet so again fishing poles um you know skis guns um what have you you know you can throw quite a bit in there very nice okay and then uh are you going to put some kind of handle on the door or how does that work or yeah. what's the situation so there we've got these nifty little uh latches here which will actually sit flush um they'll 
go down in there like that. So. Okay, cool. So you don't have to worry about it hitting the door when you close the door because it actually sits just flush with the wood there. Yeah, and then you'll have this little latch here that keeps it closed. Um, it'll be a push button, and then that'll give you a little handle to pull open the drawer. Okay. So I've heard for some people that uh, those aren't that strong, or why go with that, mm -hmm. or what is that? Yeah, um, well, you know, one is the idea is make sure you don't have anything that you're bumping into, break off, hit your knees on, whatever, and this was this kind of satisfied that because it's flush. Okay. Um, some people say not to uh, just because of the, the back piece here. This one you can see is metal, so it's a little bit stronger than some of the other ones that are made in plastic. Okay. Um, what we're also going to do with this one to make it a little bit stronger is we have some 25-pound magnets that we're going to put on the back inside of the doors as well, too, just for some added security, too. So okay. um, hopefully that'll make them a little bit stronger. All right. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So that's going to go in every single cabinet or door that opens? Yeah, anyone that swings open. You know, right. So we'll go over to here and kind of show you what we have going on here. And that'll just prevent everything from swinging and open you know while we're driving you know but again um you can see i've got some storage already utilizing that right now but uh you know the idea behind this was if you remember in the earlier videos this is all insulated behind here so um getting thought behind here was you know electronics maybe food really just depends on what the van's utilized for we've got it set up to do quite a bit you know so we're kind of leaving it up to um you know, whoever ends up with the, um, the van to kind of set it up and not do it entirely, but still give them some room to modify it, you know, or customize it to, to their liking, you know, so, um, you know, but a good size cabinet there. I think this one's three feet by about 12 inches. Um, and then we got about, I think, 13 inches high. So quite a bit of storage in there. Very good. Yeah. Very good. And let's talk about the structure for a little bit, because I've been in a, in a lot of vans, so have you. And just sitting on this right now, is yeah. there any give, any movement? Is it solid? Or what? Do, just talk about that for a second. Yeah, no. So it's, you know, it's it's, it's basic RV construction. Um, you know, we've done stick framing. So we've done the, the, the one by twos um, to kind of build our skeleton underneath. And then we've strengthened that by using shiplap on the outside and then some half inch um, sanded plywood on the top of there. Very good. Um, so it's but it's a stuff. solid build, right? You said oh, yeah. regular RV stuff, but when I think regular yeah. RV, I think flimsy and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not regular. No, so yeah, we use we use quarter or half inch inch at a minimum all the way across. Um, these are gonna be three quarter inch doors, but everything else is gonna be a half inch at a minimum, really just you know, it's still fairly lightweight. Um but we, again, we wanted to make sure it could hold quite a bit of weight. You know, if you've got three or four people sitting on each side, um, sleeping on it, whatever, it, it, you know, it's, it's going to be structurally sound. Very good. Yeah. All right. And then uh, let's talk about, uh, you got a little bit of storage back here behind yeah. you. Yeah. So we'll pull this out here. Still kind of in progress here. Um, so again, the idea is, is, you know, I'm sitting on the bench here. Um, moving forward, we're looking at putting some sort of convertible bed on top of here. Um, which is still kind of being designed, you know, how it folds up, how it flips up, how, how it goes together, you know. But the idea is that this this, this right here, the space I'm sitting on, once completed. Um, so right now it's set up so if somebody wanted to put a mountain bike or something in here, it's going to fit that nicely right down the center. Um, again, you know, if they're not necessarily sleeping in here, we wanted to make sure that this had multiple uses, whether you're sitting on it or sleeping on it. So, um, but the idea is that this will accommodate a full-size bed once it's completed. Um, which is the idea for this, you know, so you get in after a long day of hiking, fishing, whatever, um, you know, and so figure like a jacket like you're wearing now, um, we'll stuff up in there nicely, your keys, your wallet, phone, maybe just a few additional things that you just need easy access to. So nothing crazy fancy, just, you know, kind of like a little stuff, stuff pocket area. Very good. Yeah. And uh, that's also setting you up for some kind of a window frame or how, how are you going to put a curtain here, <coughs> or blinds? What is that? What's going on here? Yeah. So, you know, you notice on this van, there's quite a bit of windows. So we made sure to do wood framing all the way around. So that I think the idea was to put some sort of blinds in there just to, uh, you know, still give you nice views out, but um, give you some privacy at night when you're sleeping also help keep the, the warm in. You know. Okay. Very cool. All right. And then we're going to move on further to the kitchen area. Yeah. Is that right? Yep, yeah, that's the kitchen area. One area I do want to point out, too, if we can shoot back here. So you can, you can, yeah. I just wanted to show this, too. So. Um, this, oh, yeah. This, that's this, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, this was a little tricky, but we left the, the rear air conditioner in there. Um, so this will still vent the air out here. So we've got the intake here. We just built around the existing system and then we have a mental intake, um, the exhaust fan there for the air conditioner. So you still get you know, hot or cold through it. Okay, I like that, right? Redundancy, right? Yeah. We're going to have a heating system in here, but it's nice to know you can always turn on the van as long as you've got gas and you'd still be able to uh, heat up the back. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, again, we want to keep as much stuff functional. Um, so let's follow the airbags in and we'll go into the kitchen. Okay. Because I know some people have some questions about the airbags, you know. Um, what year is this again? 2017? Yeah. So 2017 was the first year they do the curtain airbags. So they run all the way from the front to just about here. Um, some people disable them, but, um, you know, we want to keep everything road safe. So um, we use a uh, quarter inch Luon here. Um, this is made out of birch as well. So should there be an accident these will still deploy um so we just built around the airbags from front to back so those are still active and keeping in mind of course that the idea is not to have people back here traveling right you know so it's yeah. not supposed to be something that you're like oh yeah i'm traveling in the back and the side er uh, curtain airbags yeah. are gonna work so yeah no definitely you know the big thing was is they run to the front of uh, the driver and the passenger side so yeah. um we needed to keep them in, you know active for that reason you know so, exactly uh, building around was definitely tricky but um, yeah, that's what we came up with. So in the kitchen here, um, do nice uh, butcher block style uh, countertops here. Um, still haven't opened this up yet. That'll be kind of the next step. Um, I think we're looking at you know putting a cooktop here, and then um, we've made this so it'll accommodate a, uh, a sink. Um, so we're going to do a, a pump action sink. So there's really no power involved in this, but that'll give us the ability to wash dishes, wash our hands, cook without having to step outside, lose our heater, be in the cold. Yep, very nice. Okay. So we've got some drawers here, which open up nicely. Um, these are all built from the ground up, so um, fairly sturdy. Again, you can see we did a three-quarter inch um, box box drawers there. So. Um, got two of those and these are all soft clothes so they're actually gonna be pretty nice when we're very driving. cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the same kind of hardware on these as well yeah same kind of hardware on these okay. um, again just gives us the ability to, to you know lock and close when we're driving you know and let's talk about the hinge like the slide itself looks pretty heavy duty mm -hmm. i mean it doesn't look like you went through i mean you yeah. if you open that up yeah, so it. yeah so what was your selection criteria to pick out this slide or do you know the capacity off the slide itself i want to say it's 30 pounds okay um, don't quote me on that but i think they're generally around 30 pounds on okay. weight um these were the heaviest duty we could find um, yeah. for this application anyway um you know my criteria was to have a soft close um i didn't want drawers to be flipping open while we we're driving so these are a little bit stiffer okay um, and as you see when they go in they hold you know they hold shut quite a bit um takes me a little bit of effort to actually pull those out so no way that's going to open up by itself just going down the road <laughs> no not unless you have like a 15 pound weight in there it shouldn't really open up okay yeah, very cool so. all right um and then we've got same style doors here um again we haven't finished this out yet but maybe we can get in there um so this would be for the sink um the uh the, the fresh water as well as the gray water tank um, so that we can, you know, easily get some reservoirs in there and pump and dump our water all in one uh, one application there. And what's the dimensions off this section right here? Uh, this one's going to be roughly, let's see, we're looking at 24 depth. Uh, you're looking at about 30 inches wide or so. And then we've got about 25 inches on the height. Okay, very cool. So some of the smaller sinks, it should fit in there nicely. I like that. All right, and uh, same thing with the windows here, same blind situation. Mm -hmm. Yep, same same situation with, uh, you know, we've got some nice sturdy framing here so we can kind of, um, you know, attach some uh, some window framing too. And some more magic over here, of course. You yes. have that kind of following the curve. Yeah. And talk about the insanity of building a Chevy van. Like, we'll do Sprinter vans and yeah. all that, and it's, I'm not going to say super easy, mm -hmm. right? But... Let's just talk about doing it in such a small space mm -hmm. that is so curved. Yeah, like you said, nothing straight. So um, even both sides are different, you know, so we've got some asymmetry going on here and um, definitely makes it very unique, very complicated. Um, every piece is built, um, you know, to the van, to fit the van. A lot of scribing going on, as we see here. Um, you know, the big thing was we wanted to follow as many of the curves, just kind of accent the van, um, being so small in here or being smaller than a, a sprinter van. Um, you know, I felt it important to keep it as open as possible. And part of that was just building curves and building to the contour of the van rather than building straight boxes. Um, Very cool. So you can see like, zoom down here, we've got these nice wooden corner pieces, um, here, which fit nicely on this. Um, but when we're going up here, um, we're actually going to use a different style, which is, um, 
I don't know exactly. It's like a polyurethane style, but that will actually allow me to curve those angles. So it'll be a piece that I actually follow that curve and cover these up um, and finish those edges off really nicely. So Very cool. um, again, just, you know, one more little custom piece. Um, but yeah, lots of curves, lots of angles. Um, you can see down in this piece here, I think I showed you this one, but um, you know, this just one piece here was two different angles plus the curve, you know, so we wanted to again, just follow the van as much as possible. All right. Very cool. And then I think we are almost up to above your head. Yep, above the head. So we've got the Max Air fan. We've got that installed. Um, you can see the collar here laying on the floor behind me. Um, so once we get the roof in, uh, the shiplap ceiling, um, we'll cut that down to height and get that installed. But again, um, like I said, we're waiting to get that utility, uh, the utility um, junction drilled to the roof there so we can accommodate these wires for the for the solar panels, which will go on sometime in the future. Uh -huh. And let's talk about serviceability and our ideas behind being able to service the van. Where are the wires? Are you going to be able to get up to them or after yeah. you put the ceiling up? Yeah. Just walk us through that. Yeah, so um, all of the wires are going to run into this box right here in front of me. So, um, again, multi-configurable. We've got this built so that we can actually um, cut through it, um, put some dimmer switches, you know, USB outlets, whatever we decide we want to put in there um, to attach to our power source. Um, but when opening this one up, you can see in here, you know, zoom in there for me again. Um, we have, here, let me grab that. So we've got quite a bit of space in there um, to hold, you know, our goal zero, um, whatnot. Um, but all of our wires, go from this point here down to this point so all of our 12 volt system is going to be housed in this area so fairly easy to access um you can see we have the the rest of the electrical running from down here up to the ceiling or the, the column um which eventually runs over to here um the lights will be drilled you know four inch circles but um even when the the lights are placed in there they have um springs that kind of go in and grab to the back side of it so should one of those go out and i don't anticipate and they've got quite a long lifetime on them but should one of those go out um we'll be able to pull those out and you know just replace them right on the spot so everything's very accessible at this point very good yeah it's always very annoying when you're in an rv and it looks like no engineering went into it and you gotta spend eight days just trying to pull a ceiling panel yeah. down to change a bulb yeah there's you no know. pulling ceiling panels down on this one so. um everything's going to be housed in here or underneath here so it should be very accessible all right very good and uh just how, for how far we've gotten on this build right now any information out there for the diy kind of person who wants to build it like you're a a master carpenter and i don't even say that joking but um <laughs> what did it take to create this a lot every <laughs> every every bit of my skill sets and then some um I, i've learned quite a bit you know um, tackling this um which adhesives to use that was a big one you know connecting wood to a metal um van that's on four wheels um that doesn't slide around when you're moving yeah that was very tricky um, finding the right hardware, you know, just, you know, find the right connectors, things like that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's more than woodworking. There's a lot of overlap, um, engineering, mechanical, woodworking that all comes together. So, um, and then just making sure it fits, you know, what your intended use is going to be on it. You know, I think that's really important as well. So, um, do your research, do your homework, um, try different things um template <laughs> lots of templates um you know i think there's some pictures out there i don't think we shot a video but at one point this was all done out of foam core um foam core is relatively cheap um allowed for many mistakes allowed me to come up with the right shape even these columns here those were done with scribing as well as foam core just to make sure that we had the proper fit before we started cutting the wood which is quite expensive right now very good. Well, uh, I think that's about everything I have and think we've talked about just about anything that we didn't uh, talk about last time. So I think we're going to call it good here. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, so that's it. That's the van so far, and that's where we're at with it. Um, no magic happened in here. Like, you just heard Joel talk about this stuff. It's all just woodworking and trial and just uh, getting it having a personal attachment to what you're doing which is what we're doing here it's not oh yeah let's build this to flip it to sell it no it's about let's build something great and uh that's what's going on into uh that's what's going into the the build of this van right here but 
for right now, I think that's about it. I think this video has been long enough already. We'll catch you guys up once we have a little bit more information. We got to do the electrical right now and then uh, just kind of work on closing up the rest of the ceiling. And then uh, we'll uh, be back on and uh, show you where it's at. And uh, until then, peace.